So this video is about category order by and pattern order by column name or column position. And we read that a column name can be used even when a column is not present in the select statement for sorting. But with column position, column must exist in the select list. So we'll do a quick test to confirm this hypothesis. I've created a dummy table and added six rows into that table. You can see here there are six records into the table. And let's test the first hypothesis that when I give column name, uh, can I use so those columns also which are not even part of my select statements in the select I've added two column first name and last name from employees and let me do order by employee ID so employee ID is not part of select statement let me run this query and see so you can see right the first name and last name columns are in the output but the sorting order is actually on the basis of employee ID you can see John Doe, Jane Doe these are one and two and that's how we are getting in the output so this confirms the first part of the first hypothesis that column name can be used to order output on the basis of columns which are not even part of the select list. So the columns which are not even coming in the output, I can still use them for sorting purpose. But if I replace this employee ID by order by one, right? So now one does not correspond to the first column in the table, which is employee ID. It corresponds to the first column in the select list, which is first name. So let me run this query and see the output. So you can see that now the first name column is used for sorting purpose and the output is sorted on the basis of first name which is the first column in the select list. So this confirms our first hypothesis that with column name you can sort it on the basis of columns which are not even part of select list but for column position ordering it the column must be part of select list and it, the order position is actually the orderal position of columns in the select list. Now there is one more point in the tips and tricks section is that null is treated as the biggest value by default in most of the databases during order by. We will quickly do a test to confirm this hypothesis as well. So what I will do is I'll just run this query to show you all the records in the table. And I see the termination date column has four null values in it, right? So now let me just do order by termination date and by default the value is ascending so you can see all the null values are coming at the last so in a way you can say that null are treated as the biggest or the largest value in any data set uh, null corresponds to the unknown value but when it comes to sorting it is treated as one of the biggest values that's why it is by default put it at the last right and you can see if i do order by termination date descending which is biggest date should come the first so you see all the null values are coming at the top right so this also proves the this hypothesis that null is treated as the biggest value by default. There is one more way to handle it. You know that in your data, you are expecting some null values to come, but you always, whether you are sorting by any column on the basis of ascending or descending, you want your nulls to always comes at the last, right? So you can add this keyword nulls last in your order by. And when I'll run this query, you will see whether it is descending or ascending null will always come at the last right so let me prove it to you by changing descending to ascending and running the query so you see the ascending order is there but nulls are still coming at the last right so that's how you can use nulls last or null first to make sure that if there are null values coming in your column and then you can specify whether you want all nulls to be at the top or you want all nulls to be at the last using nulls first or null for last keyword as well keep this in mind these are very small, small tips and tricks, but in many cases it becomes tricky if you don't understand it clearly.